Hello, my name is Scott Fromey. Welcome to the Backwoodsman's Institute. Well, a little bit earlier this summer, I did a video on poison ivy. And in that video, one of the plants that I talked about that was like a so-called remedy to poison ivy, or at least the oil of the poison ivy plant, was jewelweed. And I told you then that I'd do a, a video later on on jewelweed. And the reason why I waited till now to do the video on jewelweed is because jewelweed is a tough plant to show how to identify on video. But if it's in, in bloom, it's a little bit easier to identify. So right now it's about mid-September and around here in southern Indiana the jewelweed is in bloom. Now I'll go ahead and pick off some of the here, if I can pick off a little stem of it and show you the flower of the jewel reed. So, the flower of the jewel reed is kind of like a cone shaped flower. This is actually called a spotted jewel reed. Now, the reason it's spotted is because the, the flower itself, I don't know if I can pan in there close enough for the zoom, it's got like spots on the, on the flower itself. So, the flower is orange. And on the inside of the, of the flower, it's kind of a reddish color, and it's got spots on it. So, like I said, now is when the time when you can go out there and you can identify the plant itself to, with the blooms on and kind of follow it and learn what it looks like so that in the spring, without the blossoms, you know, like I said, you, you already know the plant, you can identify it easy enough. Like I stated earlier, it's like an antidote to poison ivy. And the reason it's the antidote is the juice itself from the leaves and from the stem contain a certain type of chemical that actually neutralizes the oil that's on the poison ivy. That's what makes it, you know, it gives us a rash or gives it like the blisters on the skins of, of humans. So this juice neutralizes that. So if you can apply the juice within two to three days of getting it or right when you know you're getting it you can pretty well you know, like I said neutralize the effect of that oil that's on the poison ivy so that's why I feel you know as an outdoorsman or a hunter or any if you're doing something like the, some of the plants that you absolutely should know how to identify is poison ivy and jewelry because sooner or later you're going to contact with poison ivy and if you know you're in contact with it, at least there's a plant out there that's kind of like the remedy for it. The jewel reed is also part of the touch-me-not family of the flowers. So why does it get its name, touch-me-not? Well, I'll see if I can't find it. But it, the seed pod, here's like a seed pod right here. And this one's not right ripe yet but once the seed pod gets to ripe and you just barely touch it it kind of pops open and disperses its seeds that way so that's why it's called touch me not because that's the way it, it's that's what it utilizes and how it disperses its seed here's a seed pod right here now in that seed pod like I said I'm not sure if it's ripe enough that it'll, it'll disperse out or not but in that seed pod, there's several seeds in there, and see if I can't just see if I can get it to pop. Oop, it popped open. I don't know if you caught that or not, but you can see that right there is how it disperses the seed. And so once it's really ripe, this one probably would have popped another, you know, day or so. But it just kind of there's about two, four, six, or eight seeds in there that. Here's a seed pod that's not quite ripe yet in here, but once it once you touch them They'll go ahead and pop open and that just disperses the seed and that's why it's called a touch-me-not And it's a member of the touch-me-not family now where's it get his name actually jewel weed well The the plant itself the leaves kind of shed water and and glisten when they get wet and that's why the plant you know, it's called jewelry. That's how it gets its name. But you're actually using the juice. You're smashing up the juice from the or the leaves, 
and a, and a stalk and applying it to the area that was infected by poison ivy. Now you're saying, well, what if I get poison ivy in the winter time? Well, one of the ways which a lot of people do is they'll go ahead and get a lot of the plant and crush it up and and kind of crush it real good and then kind of freeze it like in ice cube trays so that in the winter time let's say you're cutting firewood or you're messing with poison ivy vines and you come down with poison ivy you can go ahead in the ice box pull you out a, a jewel weed ice cube and apply it to that area that was affected with uh, poison ivy that's one way of doing it another way of doing it is some I've heard of people actually making like taking this and, and cooking in, in down in a, like a tea like thing and then freezing that tea and applying that tea onto the area that's been affected by poison ivy so it's blooming now like I said, middle of September, if you got an area out there, it grows in a moist area of the woods. So, like I said, uh, along creek banks, um, some areas, like I said, if, if it's a moist area of the woods, more than likely it's got some jewel weed in there. There's several different varieties. Most of it's pretty well the same as this. Like I said, this one is the spotted jewel weed. That's what I grow, or that's what grows around my area, you know more abundance than any other type so that's the one that I make a point to recognize and try and teach some of my students and anybody I can how to identify jewelweed like I said it's a remedy for poison ivy it's also for stinging nettle stuff like that so it's a good plant to learn go ahead and learn it catch you out in the woods